Campbell there was talking about energy. I'm going to turn my attention to energy now. And we're obviously in the middle of a debate at the moment. Uh, all our energy uh, sources are under pressure and at risk. And we're being told we might even have blackouts during the winter, but not enough gas. I want to talk nuclear, though. I mean, family and business is obviously struggling with expensive energy. So we should be taking every option we can. Now, a clean alternative is it could get our country back on track, but it continues to be demonised by the government. But this week, guess what? A new poll out revealed half or over a half of Australians back Peter Dutton's nuclear energy plan as part of the country's power mix. To talk about all things nuclear, I'm joined by a man who certainly knows it better than most, technical director of SMR Technology, Tony Irwin. Tony, great to have you with us. You've got amazing experience in the nuclear fuel cycle. You've commissioned eight nuclear power reactors in the UK. Is Australia barking mad not to get the ball rolling on nuclear? It, it certainly is. I mean, we, we need to employ every possible technology that we, we've got um, to get, you know, low, low emissions. And nuclear is, is the only low emissions technology that's it's independent of the weather. There's 440 reactors worldwide operating in more than 30 countries and more countries joining them all the while. So we should really be into this. As that European commissioner said the other day, um, we need to consider every possibility. We need to use everything we can. What does uh, the world in your, where you live make when they hear that Australia goes, well, yeah, we've got lots of uranium, we're happy to, to export it, but we don't want to use it ourselves to have our own nuclear, uh, nuclear system to, to help bring our power bills down and to get us to net zero. Do they think we're crazy? Yes, I mean, we've got more uranium supplies than anywhere else in the world. And the world's crying out for uranium, so we should supply, be supplying more. We should also be doing the next stages of this as well, doing the enrichment and, and fuel manufacture. We could be into all these stages. It would be better to put money into that than anything else. But the, the electricity is, is the one that we, we really need for our grid system. And it's, it's not only electricity that nuclear can supply, it's things like process heat, uh, which solar and wind can't supply directly. And, and these are the other areas that we're going to have to decarbonise in, in the future. Is the idea that the opposition's put up that uh, probably a good location for a, a nuclear reactor, we're not sure what size yet, would be on the site of existing coal-fired power stations that might be decommissioned so you could hook that nuclear reactor into the existing grid? Is that practical? Absolutely, and there's, we've put a paper out on our website and there's a, there's a new US DOE paper just out that examines this in detail. And it's got huge advantages because you use the existing transmission connections. So all the problems we're having now about new transmission lines to remote solar places, you avoid all that. You use a lot of the existing infrastructure, so the water supplies, you know, a lot of the, the buildings, etc., all the access roads are already there. But importantly, you can also retrain the staff. And this is what we did in the UK, and this is what Bill Gates is doing in, 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 in the US, in the Wyoming plant. Because most of the jobs of a, a coal-fired power station you know, can be transferred to a nuclear. If you're a turbine operator, you're a turbine operator. <laughs> and you, you can just transfer with, with some training. So a, a, a nuclear plant would fit on any coal-fired power station plant. You know, it, Liddell is 100 hectares. An SMR would need, say, 10 to 15 hectares. So it would fit in the corner of a nuclear power plant. So, and lots of advantages to the, the local community because nuclear jobs are, are well paid but also it, it attracts other suppliers as well. So the whole e economy increases as well. And there's, there's a lot of studies that you can look at that, that show the effects on local communities of, of um, having a nuclear power plant in your area. 
I've had young William Shackle on the program. Uh, he's an outstanding young man. I know you've now joined Nuclear for Australia, their campaign. That's uh, working to lift the ban of nuclear power in Australia. Are you getting close, do you think? Well, there's 20,000 now signed that petition. And if any of your viewers haven't, then go to nuclearaustralia.com and, and, and sign up because we, we really need to remove the ban uh, and get started on our nuclear power program.